brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, suds. It's time for more suds. Welcome, everyone. Here we are yet again for another sud segment where good beer meets bad radio. Joining me at the table today is good old boy Dave. You will respect my authority. Do we have to? Uh, he just said you will. But do I have to? Well, don't you always? <laughs> you have no authority. <laughs> but you will Except respect your it. Precious little soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Good boy, Kendall. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Good boy, Timmy. Here I am. Glad to be back. Oh, my. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> and it's me. Juliana. It's my way. It is. Or the highway. As part of our summer of questionable decisions, we are looking for everything we can find to beat the heat. I mean, it is. It's a scorcher today. To that end, we've made some frozen treats with beer. Yeah. Frozen treats and beer. We're going to try ice cream, sorbet, and slushies today, all made with different types of beer. But before we get into that, this Sud segment is brought to you by... Stuff and Things. Do you like stuff? Do you need things? Well, come on down to Stuff and Things. We've got more stuff than anyone, and our things are so competitively priced. Stuff and Things, Things and Stuff, Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things. Now, with more stuff. Most of us here have probably had a frozen margarita, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, at least one in our life. Just one or two. How about a bushwhacker? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I don't think you could be on lower broad without having at least one (laughs) in a night. There are tons of frozen drinks out there using a variety of spirits. Why not beer? I mean, we blend beer. We cook with it. We even use it in cocktails. The next logical step is, of course... Beer slushies? Yeah, they are a thing. Not really new, but new-ish, and certainly not everywhere yet. But they're coming. They are coming. And they are not just for people who like to hang out at tap rooms, and they, oh, English, second language. And they are not just for people who like to hang out at tap rooms, but don't really like beer. Even hardcore beer nerds like us really enjoy them. Heck, there's no bigger fan of beer slushies in physical size as well as enthusiasm than good old boy Caperton. I mean, he loves his saisons, don't get me wrong. But give him a fruity, sour beer slushy, and he giggles like a schoolgirl. Well, okay, maybe not that. but a giant bearded schoolgirl. But he does <laughs> like them. <laughs> How about the rest of you guys? What do you guys think of beer slushies? Have you guys had had I'm not sure. I've had a beer beer slushy, but I I like the principle. Yeah, I actually haven't had one at a tap room either. Wow. Um, What? I know they're a thing. You see them on Instagram all the time. Yeah. I don't know that they're my thing, but I'm open to trying them. Now, the beer ice cream, that's that's combining two of my favorite things, so I I can get on board there. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, they're very similar to... I mean, like you guys have had like a slush puppy or a, an icy when you were a kid. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of them are Snow just cone. like that. You know, you you just take a base beer, freeze it, and then um, you know you usually have to add like some simple syrup or some agave nectar or something just to take the edge off because the the bitterness really really comes out a lot more uh, when it's frozen. Yeah. Well, now I mean, now most a lot of tap so many tap rooms have the whole spectrum of beer from like sweet fruited beers to, you know, sour beers with tons of fruit and things that I could see going with slushy. You know, we're not talking about taking someone's Pilsner and making a slushy out of it. 
Or are we? Mm. I'd, I'd try it. <laughs> uh, maybe. For your mind. I'd rather have, like, uh, you know, a Berliner Weiss slushy. Ah, yeah. yeah. Not a. Or a creek. Quadruple mm-hmm. West Coast IPA. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Keep the hops away. Hop bomb. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they're pretty cool. And um, I think the first time I had one was in Virginia, right? Yeah, at the uh, the Answer Brew Pub. Yeah. What you a- guys didn't try any of those when you were there, Kendall? The, they called them juice. I don't I don't think I tried one of those at Answer. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. I, I it think was- I would have remembered a, a frozen beer slushie. Okay. Now, I did try some of their... What what did they call them? The popsicle gozes. Mm-hmm. Those were good. I could see how yeah. you could just throw yeah. those in a slushy machine, yeah. and it would be delicious. And it was crazy because a lot of them were fruity, but I th- I swear there was like a blueberry stout or something that that they had done that way. There was it was a ton of different beers, and all their beers were really really good. But um, yeah, man, they just they've got the big slushy machines stacked up behind the um, behind, behind the, the bar, bar there, and they're just cranking them out constantly churning them yeah um, that's interesting they it do was, a lot of business with them too yeah it was really bizarre because we were sitting at the bar and i was looking at that and i was thinking surely that is like what are they allowing kids here like is this just a, yeah. like i couldn't wrap my head around the fact that they were actually serving it until i looked at the menu and then i'm like oh this is just well, crazy talk yeah. isn't it legal for kids to drink alcohol if it's in a slushy form that's true absolutely if it's brightly colored <laughs> and in a semi-frozen form um yeah it's game on wow because the alcohol doesn't metabolize at that point if, yeah. oh is that what it is <laughs> it, yeah, not uh, until 21 yeah what was yeah. i thinking it just sits there yeah I mean, it's create it's a creative idea i like it. it it brings something else you know it's like when I feel like when people tap room started having ciders and other options, it's like if you're going with a group of people, not everyone has the same wants or, or flavors that they want. And so some people want an IPA, some just want to get a cider, and some want a beer slushy. Yeah. Like, why not expand your offerings? It's well, you know, like people, you see them, like, even if they do it with guest taps and stuff, they'll exactly, uh, yeah, have a mead or something on right. Like, you need a lot of those session meads now, which that's yeah. a weird thing that's in yeah. of itself that's another show that is another we doing show. mead slushies hmm. well, yeah, well, you know that what? could work actually i could probably like it might hmm. be bad get, get back there to the freezer get yeah. something going yeah okay well good old boy dave has spent some time making frozen beer desserts for us today and as the cleanup crew it's been quite a spectacle we're going to try some and talk about whether this is Really a trend or just one more stupid thing we'll all laugh at 20 years from now? We'll probably laugh at it in just a probably, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> People, you guys laugh at me all the time anyways. Uh, we, we'll include recipes for the treats in the show notes, but I definitely recommend you check out a book entitled Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams at Home by Jenny Britton Bauer, founder of Jenny's Ice Cream. Lots of great recipes, and that's where we got a couple of ours from. Hey, good old boy, Kendall, would you mind doing the Suds ratings for today? Absolutely. We'll be discussing and rating these frozen goodies with these Suds ratings, plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. One, that sucks. Give me anything but brain freeze. (laughs) Two, was that a creamsicle? (laughs) Three, ah, what a relief. Four, a body should really not make that sound. And five, listen to that hang time. Give me another ice cube down my pants. It's a way to beat the heat. It is. Thanks, Kendall. That was awesome. One would choose, but so today's tasting is going to be kind of a blind tasting in parts. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is um, the ice cream float. Right. We're going to start simple. Yes. You know, as a kid, when you go over to grandma's house in the summer, there's always an ice cream float. I never 
had ice cream floats when I was a kid. Seriously? It never appealed to me to put ice cream in root beer. Man. Yeah, I, I was kind of the same way as a kid. It yeah. took me a while to... I liked ice cream. I liked root beer, but I didn't want to put them together. That's right. Oh, man. That was at my grandmother's house. That was the thing. We had our pick of Cherokee Red, which was like essentially a, it was a local cherry beer with a big Indian on it. Sure. Native American. Native American. Sorry. With a big Native American on it. Or we would have birch beer and then Mm -hmm. um, vanilla ice cream, which came from the farm down the street. And oh, my God. Both of them were really good. Didn't have much root beer though. It was yeah, yeah it was always birch or Cherokee red. Cherokee. Maybe occasionally the orange <sighs> crush. Sounds even worse. Yeah, well, well, you know, it made a creamsicle though. It was good. <gasps> creamsicles. Were what? Close. Did... Hey, How about you, Timmy. It was a thing as a kid. Yeah, we did root beer floats like big IBC. I remember mm, growing up on IBC root beer and cream uh, soda. Yeah. But I'm with. I'm with the other male co-hosts. I did not like the mixture of the root beer and ice cream uh, flavors. Yeah. I mean, two two of my favorite things as a kid, but suck separation of you know church and state. Too yeah. much of a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you might explode. Uh, well, the adult version of that is combining really good ice cream and really good beer. And for today, we combine we combined a Talente Madagascar vanilla ice cream. Pretty, you know, decent vanilla on its own Mm -hmm. with uh, three stouts. So the first stout is from Mass Landing. It's called Gunner's Daughter Milk Stout. It's a beautifully aromatic milk stout with both flavors of peanut butter, coffee, dark chocolate. And it's only 5.5% ABV. Kind of cool. The second one is from... um, it's a V fudge with strawberries from Bearded Iris and mm, combines. It's an oatmeal imperial stout. We'll be right back after this brief interlude. Welcome back, everyone. So today's summer of questionable decisions is, involi- is involving frozen treats and beer. Exactly. We're all screaming for ice cream. There's a crowd out in the here screaming. It's nuts. It's just nuts. It's weird. It's very yeah. awesome. So, wow. That's extreme. Yeah. So we're talking we're about. take our ice cream. We're talking about ice cream floats. And I was starting to mention before the break mm-hmm. um, the three beers that we use to go with our ice cream float. So the first one, of course, was the Mass Landing, the Gunner's Daughter. The second one that I was in the middle of talking about was from Bearded Iris. It's their V Fudge with strawberries. It's an imperial oatmeal stout um, with chocolate from Olive and Sinclair, uh, both the brewery and the Monster. chocolate are from Nashville and this beer is a 9.5% ABV beer and then lastly a little international flair here from Omnipolo it's the Agamemnon it's an imperial stout brewed with maple syrup and natural flavors and this is 12.5% ABV good lord 5.5, it runs the gamut it does So 12.5 Twelve and a half. half. Sorry, yes. I didn't mean to cheat them. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got to pick which one we wanted to use. So, who was the V Fudge variety? That was me. Okay. Talk about V Fudge strawberry and ice cream. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the concept. It is the easiest way. You just scoop yourself some ice cream and then pour the beer on top and mix it in a little bit. Um, this beer. I was just given to it by Dave, so I don't know if he picked it. Probably not, because it was a good decision. Uh, the- wow. <laughs> Are you blaming me on Dave? I'm just saying. I think he's saying I was- don't make good decisions. Exactly. Uh-huh. It's too good of a thing for him to do on purpose, because he gave me <laughs> vanilla ice cream with the fudge beer that has strawberries in it. So this thing tasted just like a Neapolitan ice cream, really. Um, it worked really well. It worked so well that... I enjoyed the ice cream and beer more than just the beer. Um, <laughs> I tried that by itself afterwards. It wasn't bad. It's just 
the ice cream added some kind of rounds off the edges a little bit because yeah. there's a there's a lot in that in that beer. I mean Exactly, there is. It's aggressive. And ton of, the ton vanilla of ice cream yeah. and the the vanilla bean, you know, it's like good vanilla ice cream, not just bland vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Um yeah. I, yeah, I was a fan. One thing is if you're going to do this, go ahead and get the spend the extra couple bucks on a pretty good um brand of ice cream. That way you're not, you know, just using the regular store brand stuff that's fake vanilla try to get some real yeah. vanilla in there actual flavor to it makes stand a difference up, yeah to stand up to the beer you know yeah and, exactly especially when you're dealing with a, a higher abv beer such as these and the yeah. v fudge on its own it's i mean it's very roasty but it's also strawberry like you're yeah. everything that it says it is <clears throat> it is fudgy it's roasty and it's yep the, the strawberry on it, the aroma is like almost intoxicating at how like strawberry it is, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I think you guys are right. The vanilla ice cream definitely toned down the, the booze and the strawberry and the um, roastiness. So, yeah. But nice. I mean, you don't just have to have a plain old oatmeal stout for this. Nope. What did you rate your concoction of V fudge with strawberries fudge, and vanilla? Neapolitan vanilla deliciousness i gave it a suds rating of a four uh, oh right. way to be okay so somebody here at the table did a combination of the mass landing gunner's daughter milk stout with vanilla ice cream right yeah i thought it was really good uh yeah i did, did it too oh you did yeah, what did you think did. about it i i liked it kind of what tim said is is that ice cream kind of made the beer better yeah um the peanut butter in the beer, I don't know. I'm still not totally sure about peanut butter beers yet. It's it's a good enough beer, but with that vanilla ice cream and the float, those peanut butter flavors and the vanilla played very well together. You get that little bit of chocolate, little roast in there, but it was mostly just vanilla and peanut butter, and yeah. it was uh, it was a nice combination. Yeah, I think it, I think the ice cream helps accentuate the mouth feel too. So it just adds this whole. Um, other sensory experience to to as well kind of coat your mouth and um, just makes it you know just makes it really tasty all around. I like so, that a lot. So, what did you rate the Mass Landing and Vanilla Ice Cream? Flip. Yep. Well, I'm I'm a yeah. four. Dave's oh throwing a three, but uh, I'm you know a four. what? I, I'll go four. I was going three for you, but if we're no. going four. No, we're you, going four. Yeah. Uh, I like it. Uh, and then me having to be different, I went with the Agamemnon, and she went as boozy as you can get. I did, <laughs> you know. And I had, I'm really, I'm really impressed by this because, well, I'm impressed and kind of weirded. So it says that there's a lot of ma- that there's maple syrup added. Now, if there is any maple syrup added, I don't necessarily sense it. There's a little sweetness on the end, so maybe that's it, but. I'm not getting like true traditional maple syrup flavor that I've had in other maple stouts. It's, I get just a hint of it. It's very subtle though. It's it's like a lot of it just ferment it out. But mocha for days. I mean, once I added the vanilla ice cream to it, the mocha that came out of this was like unbelievable. Now, is it still boozy? Yeah. Yep. I mean, you need to let it air out a bit. It takes a while to get the whole thing into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. but That's what she said. <laughs> but the you mocha on this is one. so different than any other of the stouts that we used. It's... They, is they a, this can't is a, get through. Are you it. all right? This is a, this is, this is a hoss, dude. Having it's making my eyes water. Yeah, it's an intense beer. Yeah, you've you've really got to let this puppy air out, but it just goes whomping and a stomping, man. Yeah, right? It does across your mouth. It does, but I I really enjoyed it, and I like how different it is from the other two. You okay? Do you need a yeah, minute? Yeah, no, but I, I definitely think some vanilla ice cream probably did make a, a nice impact on that. Yeah, yeah, it definitely softens it, um, and it takes a little bit of the booziness away from it. But again. Such a profound amount of mocha on there that I, I'm still like wowed by it. That's you know, because you know, bushwhacker. It almost is, yeah. It yeah. almost is. And I rated 
my version, which is the Agamemnon slash vanilla ice cream float, a four. I wonder, you know, because the mouth feels kind of thin on that Agamemnon. So I bet you that maple did just um, ferment on out. And sure. Just dried and give that, it that ABV. And dried it out. Yeah, it'd be interesting to, well, I think it's interesting that all three of these beers we all enjoyed more with the ice cream. Yep. Um, yeah. But also it would be cool to like boil it, boil one of them down and reduce, you know, reduce it a little and make oh. like a syrup. Nice. Uh, and put yeah. that over over some ice cream. That might be good. Yeah. I feel like that would be good. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe you should just take a pint of vanilla ice cream to you, with you anytime you go to a tap room. <laughs> and you're like just. It sounds kinda, like a better idea. Yeah. yeah. I'm on board with that. Yeah, if the sure. beer's not great, just put a little ice cream in it. <laughs> a little ice cream. And it'll better. be perfect. Yeah. Instant fix. I mean, most ice cream containers, they'll hold, just eat a little ice cream off the top, make some yeah. room, pour that in. Pour it in. Could you imagine if a certain winter beer fest had like a little ice cream float station mm, with some good, of the yeah. billions of stouts that they have? That would Man. be amazing. That's, if only we knew someone involved. That's not a bad idea. A, a, a 2014 <laughs> backyard rye float. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Okay, all right, off subject. One, off subject. one can dream. <laughs> one can dream. And what a dream that is. Oh, my God. Okay, so we've done the float, but now let's get a little funky. Let's get a little bit more aggressive. Right. What if we actually made an ice cream with the beer in it? Dun, dun, dun. I did. What? You did. I yeah, did. Was- with these... Hands. With those hands. Oh, I, I wish I had known that before I ate it. <laughs> I'm not yeah. talking about the cleanup How do you think I got the ice cream into your cup? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got no scoops around here, boy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just the ones the Lord gave me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, uh, I actually, this is one of the recipes I got out of the Jenny's book. And um, I, it, I didn't follow the exact recipe because they used coffee and some different things. Um but I used a uh, prairie bomb. Oh. Uh, so it's got vanilla. Uh, I think it's got yeah vanilla, coffee, and chocolate, and uh, chilies. Nice. So yeah. I didn't. There was no heat that came out because you no. only use about two thirds of a cup of the beer for a, a quarter ice cream. Oh. Okay. But um, but it definitely I think added some richness to the uh, to the ice cream. But what do you guys think about it? I loved it. It was a delicious ice cream. It, it tasted almost like uh, coffee with a lot of cream in it. So just like a very creamy coffee, which is generally how I drink my coffee. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just a little bit of, you got a little bit of that chocolate, but just mm-hmm. the creaminess uh, was was insanely good. And I'm not, I'm sure a big part of that came from the, the ice cream itself. Yeah. Just that natural coating you get with that dairy. But uh, the flavors worked really well. Yeah, I thought it was incredibly creamy and uh, and rich. You, I couldn't pick out any sort of beer flavor, like any little carbonation or um, malt or anything like that. But yeah, can, it definitely. I don't think the beer stood out really in any way. Yeah, I'm no. sure I added some of the chocolate. If I didn't know beer was in it, I never would have guessed. I just figured you put a little coffee in there um, to to give it a little, that flavor, maybe a little chocolate. Yeah. So Bomb is a, uh, an imperial stout aged on coffee, chocolate, vanilla beans, and ancho chili peppers. The peppers add just the right amount of heat to complement the intense coffee and chocolate flavors. Bomb has been named a rate beer, top 100 beer in the world for three consecutive years. It's 13% ABV. So that's the biggest one yeah. yet. But yet in this, it was it was really smooth. First of all, I think the ice cream recipe was good as a base itself. I mean, yeah. Yeah. like in terms of an ice cream, I'm sure you guys have had chocolate ice creams before that were like, you know, kind of chunky and chewy and not like real chocolate flavor. This one really was though. So, I mean, kudos to that with that recipe. But even beyond that, the roastiness on there was there, and it made, again, another mochaness to it, but still really good. And um, a little hint of spiciness as well. I mean, in Prairie Bomb, 
We've all enjoyed it at like winter oh, warmers yeah. and winter time. And the variants that Prairie Brom has is like always something you look forward to every year. I think it was a really good beer to utilize. And you're not getting the alcohol burn either. Like you're getting the essence of what the beer is without the burn that you can sometimes get. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was surprised it was bomb for 13% beer. Yeah. It's one of those beers that I don't like to open alone because yeah, it'll yeah. put I you know. out. That, that's a shareable beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, totally. I, I wish I'd had another bottle and then we could have made floats with that. Oh. Yeah. Floats with a beer made from the ice cream yeah. with the beer in it. <laughs> Ooh. That's just, uh, that's kind of blowing my mind. Wrap yeah. that around your head. So how, how much beer did you say went into a quart of ice cream? Uh, two thirds of a cup. Okay, so that's not a lot. It's not a lot at all. I think if I did it again, I would add a little bit more um, just to see if I could get a little bit more of the flavors that come out. But I think the coffee um, did definitely come out. So that was yeah. cool. Yeah, it definitely tasted though. And I don't know, yeah. really, you know, you really don't want the booziness to, no, to come I through. I wouldn't want so. too much more to yeah. come through at all. Well, so what did we rate um, Dave's concoction of <laughs> Prairie Bomb ice cream? A five. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so the stouts we know work well with ice cream. But let's go into Italian sorbet land. And is that a place? I don't know. I just made it up. It's a good place. It's a good place to be. So why don't you tell us about your sorbet concoction? So uh, one of the other recipes <clears throat> was a um, a uh, sour beer sorbet. Um, so I used uh, about a pound of uh, sweet cherries that I pureed with some sugar and some agave nectar and added some orange zest. And then um, to that, we added some Lindemann's Creek. And I used that one. Um, it's a little bit on the sweet side. That's one of the ones that's kind of back sweetened when they make it. Yeah. Um, but it's very common and a lot of people can get it. And it's a, it's a beer that even if you're not a, like a sour beer lover, People will kind of enjoy that one. Yeah, this is uh, this is good. Mm, very good. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. I mean, the cherries are there, the orange is there, and really like cuts through any sweetness that you would be expecting. And obviously, like the texture on it's really good too. I mean, sorbets to me are great in general. Yeah, they tend to be a little sugary, but you're getting really good texture and really good fruit flavor. And a creek is like is perfect. I mean, at least I think so. Yeah, I'd I'd like to have uh, maybe maybe I should have used like some some tart cherries in there too, just to kind of pull a, pull that sweetness down a little bit. But I, I think overall, I think it came out pretty good, and it was easy to make. I mean, if you get if you've got an ice cream maker, you know uh, the the hardest part was not staining the entire kitchen cherry red yeah. uh, when I was pitting the cherries. Oh, make sure you pit your cherries before you put them in the blender. Mm, unless yes. you want crunchy ice cream or yeah, sorbet. And, and arsenic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then this was a really good, though. I mean, like, I mean, it's got almost a, a grapiness to it without being grape, too. You know what I mean? Like, I think this would really be appealing for somebody who may be doesn't necessarily like creeks or doesn't think that they like creeks or into those Belgian flavors. But if you like surprise them by having something like this, yeah, then I think maybe they would be more inclined to even trying to creek afterwards. Hey, if I could have this in ice cream, maybe it's not so bad as a beer. Yeah, you know what I mean? I, I think it's definitely, again, all this goes back to is having fun, you know, and, and looking for new and different ways to enjoy beer with especially with people who maybe are not hardcore into beer you know, like, you know, everybody's got, got those friends and they're like, Oh God, how do you drink stouts? They're so dark. You know, it's like, okay, well half the time they taste like chocolate, you know, or, you know, coffee or whatever. Yeah. You like coffee. You like chocolate. I mean, it's roasty, you know, roasty flavors are the predominant parts of stouts for the most part. And if you get a pastry stout, it's going to be, 
sugary donuts or peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Candy or, bars. You yeah. like If you like sure. Little Debbie cakes, you'll love pastry stouts. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, I like the sorbet because uh, it's it's nice and refreshing, too. Like these... I could see these ice cream ones being good, like on the couch in the AC, watching yeah. a movie at the end of the night or something like that. But you know, on the on the porch in the sun, this sorbet, and uh, I think it'd be really good to have the beer along with it too. Yeah, you know, to wash down. I don't know if I feel that way about the stout ice cream mixture, but with this <laughs> thing for sure. Yeah, the Lindemans on the side would be nice, very nice. Nice glass of Creek. Yeah. 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 Do you use Can the sweet some? Lindemans? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious if you would made it made it with the Lindemans Cuvée Rene Creek. Oh yeah. That'd be That's interesting. Or even flavor. like a like a bone creek. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something a little more um a little more, more pure. acidic, a little yeah. more um targeted flavor, yeah. Yeah, but I think that with like the combination of orange in there too. The I mean, very thing. Thanksgiving-y holiday, but in like the best way possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cranberry orange. Maybe that's what we need to have at Thanksgiving every year. I would just be down with that. Sneak in a little bit of that. Well, we'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back, everyone. So for this episode of our Summer of Questionable Decisions, we have been talking about Blending beer with sweet frozen treats. Crazy, right? So before the break, we were talking about a creek and using that as a sorbet. And we decided that we were going to rate this creek sorbet a four. (laughs) Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's get crazier. Yes, just when you thought we were just going off the rails, now we're really off the rails. We're doing beer slushies. With all due respect, and remember I'm saying with all due respect, that idea ain't worth a velvet painting of a whale and a dolphin getting it on. (laughs) God, that reminds me of those Elvises from years ago. All due respect. Yeah. Yeah. You can say anything you want to anyone <laughs> if you preface it with, with all due respect. <laughs> it's a great quote from a great movie. Yeah. Maybe great the movie. greatest movie of all time. Possibly. Mm, yeah, it's up there. All right, good old boy Dave. What's this first concoction you concocted? So this one? Yeah. So this uh, is a frozen beer garita. Uh, the base beer is Sequench. Oh, Sour okay. session ale with black limes from uh, Dogfish Head. That Craft makes beer. a lot of sense now. This is a beautiful beer slushy. Great choice. Thank you. Yeah, I um, I was looking for like a lime goza, like a like a Westbrook or something, but I thought that might be a little too aggressive. Mm-hmm. And Sequench is like such a tasty it's beer. A great yeah. beer. And I think I think a general rule is if you find if you use beers that you really like the flavor of then what you make will have a much better chance of being tasty. You know, start with a good start with good ingredients. If they made tequila still, we could have used that. Oh Very yeah. True. Yeah. Very true. Um yeah. Th- this this one's incredible. It might be my favorite of the flight. Only because I mean maybe it's the salt you guys put on the rim of the glass. But it <laughs> it really gets in your head as a margarita. Yeah. And like if you were to put a half shot of tequila in this cup like absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's the only thing it's missing. It tastes like a margarita, but you don't have that little bit of a tequila bite. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. There, there is some Cointreau in there, so it's the sequench, some Cointreau, okay. lime juice, and some agave nectar. And as the ice kind of melts, when we first got it, it, was a little more frozen, and now it's more like just nice crushed ice. I like it even more. Cool. Yeah, it's very much like a margarita to me. This um, is a summertime crusher. It is. Oh I mean, totally, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you got to put the recipe on the on the website. We'll do. Or yeah, if if you're gonna try one at home, don't let me steer you one way, but let me because this is, should be the one you try. Yeah, this is this is pretty rad. Very refreshing and very approachable to people that don't drink beer. Because really, if you didn't know that there was beer involved, there wouldn't yeah, be beer. You like tell. You exactly. Know. This will be the one that would be the easiest uh, for people to try. Also, because Sequench is the most available of the three beers. So. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. And then you'll have Sequench in your fridge, which, which never bad. Uh, there's not nothing bad. wrong with that at all, ever. 
ever. Um, and what we rated this little sequench margarita y thingy is a five. <laughs> All right, moving on. Who knew Dave had this talent? All right, or a talent. Exactly. Okay, so <laughs> this second one is actually one um, that this is the only one that oh. I've actually had the slushy at the brewery. Oh. Um, uh, Southern Gris Brewing Company here in Nashville just released uh, Purple Skies, which is a great uh, purple drink inspired uh, lactose sour that's how they put it. Um, when I was at the tap room, I had the base beer and then I had it as a slushy, and it was better as a slushy. Uh, just the freezing in whatever else they added to it. Um, Do they that, have a slushy machine? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, in the nations. And and, it was really tasty. Yeah, and I've had it at the tap room um, in non-slushy form. And I'm here to tell you that it's better as a slushy as well. Yeah. I think the the grape comes out a lot more pronounced with it, but also yeah. that tartness too. It's like it goes in waves on my tongue. Like I get a little sweet, and then I get a little tart, and then I get sweet, and then I get tart. But it's yeah. like, but it's really, really cool. It finishes very well balanced. Yeah. And, kind of, and you definitely, it, when I first tried it, I thought it might be raspberry because of the tart. But then uh, as it warmed up, a little bit, I could get the grape. In fact, good old gal, June, who's not with us on this episode, but she happens to be here and got to taste it. She said it tasted like communion juice. <laughs> yeah. No, 100%. I, I definitely, that, that like um, Welch's Concord grape juice. That yeah. yeah. Everybody had much. as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty tasty. And all I added to that was some agave nectar. Just a, you need to sweeten it a little bit when you do these because it just to knock the edge off. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. But um, so refreshing, and again, another like great summer drink. Um, ooh, ooh, started. I think I drank too fast. Brain freeze. That's the risk. <laughs> <laughs> Always a risk. Are you okay? Do you need a moment? Uh, What's it's... frozen? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> you did. You know what? Zing. Yeah. I'll give you that one. Thanks. Yeah. It's the only one you'll ever get. <laughs> this uh, this is really nice. And this again is like very summery and it reminds me of the answer pub and you know, like something yeah. that they would have there, like one of their juices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and I I think this like anything, you know, at your local tap room that's along this vein, you know, you can use or even find something in a can, you know. And use it. It's not just us in our little, you know, scientific lab called a kitchen. And really, you know, all I did was I, I poured a, a 16 ounce can of it into a Tupperware and froze it. And then we got it out and just kind of chopped it up. I used a blender because um, I'm lazy. But if you wanted to just use a fork or something and kind of chop it up and, and mix a little agave nectar in there. Or you could use simple syrup, but I think agave nectar tastes better. Sure. Hmm. Well, I mean, just like the way that you would make an old school slushy, you know, because yeah. I remember back in the day, my grandmother would, you know, try to make those for us. And it was like some sort of like fruit juice and she would have it on a tray um, and it would go in the freezer. And then after it was frozen, it would come out and she'd, you know, chop it away almost like she was chipping ice and then put it back in and then like do this like three or four times yep. until she got the chunky consistency, you know, because back then you didn't have the... Luxury of having a blender, stuff. right? Yeah, or or those um like popsicle molds. You know, you used to do yep. those as kids. Oh, yeah, pour some orange juice or whatever you want in there. Yeah, you could do that as well. You could make beer popsicles. Yeah, yep. give them to the kids. Ooh. Like <laughs> totally. we talked about, anything That's in right. slushier popsicle form is legal. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, totally. So we rated the. The views expressed by a good old boy Kendall just now do not. Yes. Or one tan. This is not legal advice. Yes. No. No legal good advice. Good old boy at Kendall all. is not an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> but he may need one very soon. <laughs> uh, so what did we rate the Purple Skies um, slushy? I'm thinking four. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and. Lastly, lastly, um, so look at maybe, the funky color on this one, huh? Maybe good old boy Tim can tell us a little bit about uh. this beer. <laughs> oh, uh, is that the blueberry lemonade from Honky Tonk Brewing Company? It is. 
It's a 5% Berliner Weiss with blueberry and lemon juice added. Um, this is interesting. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> the color is a little weird. Yeah. It's kind of beige. Are your, why are your beers so weird looking? Yeah, this beer, is, it's, a, it's usually like a more purple than blue color. Um, and then good old boy Dave sabotaged it and it, it's uh, stratified. I think yeah. as I think it because it's the last one you made too. Yeah. The other ones as the ice melted a little bit more, it turned more into beer. Um, yeah, I like the the tart flavor that comes in with this. Yeah, hundred percent. No, I think sour beers, like especially ones that aren't too crazy sour, mm-hmm. like some Berliners and and Gosas that aren't extreme. Those would be great ones to use in the beer slushy. Yeah. That would be my first choice. So I will tell you full disclosure, when I was experimenting with these, I made one with um, country style. Uh, uh, Just uh, to see. New England style IPA. And uh, added orange juice. And it was really good. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think it's good. I I would, if you're going to do it, use a a New England IPA. Yeah. It's already juicier and softer. Um, don't don't go like you know some kind of West Coast hot bomb. Yeah, It'll don't don't go get stones. Yeah. Ruination. <laughs> yeah, triple IPA. Yeah. Oh, now that you said that, I want to try. <laughs> if you do try it, let us know. Yes. <laughs> Next up, the arrogant bastard slushy. Oh exactly. my gosh! Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. That would be yeah, that'd be kind of tough. Um, yeah, it's, I think like you said, you did the New England and you added orange juice. Um, for me, yeah, some sort of fruit type thing in here, like the sequench has the lime, you know, yeah. the grape. These are blueberry and, and lemon flavors. I mean, it just, I guess maybe that's just the obvious choice, but it seems to me like the way to start until you really get a grip on how to balance some flavors. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the fun part is the experimenting, you know, and then you know what the base beer tastes like, then, you know, usually... <clears throat> with everything you have to buy it by the four pack yeah. or whatever anyway so save a can do not freeze it in the can uh and please, freeze do. It. please do yourself that favor yeah plastic wear yeah is so much better um and then just uh play around with it get some some juices and and one thing i i do want to do a little bit more of is you know made the the beer garita you know maybe look at some other classic like frozen cocktails or tropical tiki drink things or something and see if I can find a, a beer to help uh, emulate some of those. Yeah. I would think, yeah, you could easily do some tiki stuff. There's yeah. definitely those flavors out there. Some of those. Cause tropical. they're also fruit, you know, fruit forward, fruit based. You just have to find the beers that kind of walk that line along with it. Yeah. I could think of a few ones with coconut and pineapple, you know, kind of thing and some lactose that come yeah. to mind that I think would be, you know, pretty rad. Lactose would, yeah, that'd be in interesting a, too. In tiki yeah. form. I probably would be when I enjoy lactose in a beer. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Finally somehow. <laughs> so what did we rate the um the last oh. one? So the blueberry, blueberry lemonade. lemonade beer slushy. Yeah. I think it's a solid four. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah, I think these were some pretty interesting. I'm pouring treats. the grape into my blueberry lemonade. Oh, you! Oh, I did it. That sounds like a good idea. Oh, yes, dude, indeed. that does sound like a good idea. See, now that's see. a master blend everybody can get behind. Maybe yeah. honky tonk and southern grist. Maybe we should collaborate. There you go. Yeah, slushies. <laughs> yeah, the Nashville slushy. I'm telling you, man. Every tap room should have a slushy machine. Dude, that's actually not bad. Yeah, the grape is the grape is still strong. It is, but Grape's it's like, but flavor. it's softened a bit by the lemonade. I wish I wouldn't have finished on. mine. It was so good. <laughs> I, know, right? I slammed it. Wow, that's nuts. I give that a four as well. To All shame. Right. We'll call that the Tim blend. The Tim blend. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. It's all about experimentation. Those well, were all delightful. I mean, and that's and that's the thing is, yes, beer is beer, and I'm sure the purists are going to be like, "What in the flying, yeah, frog are I you think doing?" Anybody, yeah. You know, I but, think anybody that's a purist has already written us off, you know, for drinking uh, maple stouts and peanut butter stouts, and you know, yeah. all the different 
The gin barrel aged peanut butter stout. Yes. Mm. Yes. God. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say that I was a little hesitant about the idea because I've never had them, but yeah, it's refreshing. It's fun. It's, it's hot a, as heck outside. So yeah. what are you going to do? Um, it's just a thing. You know? Yeah. And it's social. And if you can make a picture of them and have some friends over. Why not? Why not? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Exa- exactly. I mean, and it's another way to enjoy one of our favorite beverages anyways, you know? And as we talked about getting those people who don't think they're beer people into enjoying some of these beverages is, right. is a great way to do it. Oh right. uh, yeah, absolutely. And these are all these beers taste different, whether they're better or worse or just different. It's just a new flavor from the same beer. Yeah, Why exactly. Not freeze one or two. Sure. And for those that may not like the smoothness, you know, of a stout, well, when you put it into a float, yeah, it's still smooth, but it's a different kind and it's, you know, it turns into something completely different. And then for some of these sour beers that would otherwise be maybe too tart on their own for some people, yeah. you, you know, you add some ice to it and then the texture completely changes, therefore the flavor changes and makes it a little bit more approachable some fruit juice or some yeah. sweetener or something just to kind of soften it and you got a nice tasty treat and you can experiment and try different things especially on the float side i think a lot of people mm-hmm. are going to stick with those darker beers with a vanilla ice cream but yeah. one of my favorites is using a creek with chocolate ice cream yeah oh, yeah. Whoa. yeah try try that what yeah. oh sure and if you go to like your your local ice cream shop where they have like crazy old flavors and then start making your own blends. I mean, why not? And really at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I mean, brewers are doing it left and right, creating new flavors out of base beers. Why can't we do it too at home with making like cool little desserts? We've got technology. We should use it. We have, we do. And we have the taste buds. Let us harness it. We can do this. Yeah. See, say, point day. Yeah. So, you know, as a last parting thought here, I mean, experimentation is great. And really, I don't think we had anything that was bad or even slightly, you know. It was all enjoyable. It was. Each yeah, was absolutely. in its own different way, you know. So you can make cocktails out of beers. And, and we got to eat ice cream. Definitely better than drinking about 10 low-calorie beers in a row. Oh, God. Who I mean, would I agree do that? With you there. Who would do that? Uh, anyways. Well, that's going to do it for another Questionable Decisions Suds episode. You can always find us where you found this episode, as well as radio, satellite, online at iTunes, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and nearly any place you listen to a podcast. The easiest way to find this show on your phone is ask Alexa, Siri, or Google play podcast sip suds and smokes we love your feedback and you can always reach us at info at sip suds and smokes.com our daily tasting notes flow out on twitter and instagram every day at sip suds smoke and our facebook page is always buzzing with lots of cool news please take the time to rate this episode if you're listening online five stars five, five stars hey good old boy kendall tell us about your blog my beautiful wife good old gal june and i blog about the good news of good beer at beermakes3.com well, thank you all for being here today. Good old boy, Dave. It's going to be a good summer. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly with these, yes. Good old boy, Kendall. Thanks I had a for blast. Being here. This was a fun show. Thank you. Good old boy, Timmy. Oh, I love these questionable decisions. <laughs> Let's do it again. These questionable decisions are the best. Folks, thanks for joining us. Keep on chuggling and catch you next time.
been a 110 hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. We'll be right back.